Well, what is going on YouTube? Hey gang, how we doing today? It is nice to have you here. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me. I got something cool on the table. At least I think it's cool. Uh, this is the Kubi KU-122A, and it is an excellent little pocket knife that will not break the bank. I really like it. Um, this came to me by way of Scott Big Boar Williams. I really appreciate him and his efforts. Um, I love Kubi knives. I have a bunch of them um, floating around, and I've had many more that have come and gone over the years. This one's got a little schmutz on the blade, because Scott obviously uses it quite a bit, and you would, because it's a great little user knife. Uh, the 122A is D2. It is G10. It is steel liners with a nice deep carry pocket clip, as you can see. It's even got those nice flathead screws. The clip is not sunk into the G10, so there's a little bit of a lip right here, but nothing that is hung up on me. Uh, the liners are milled. The pocket clip is very nice, very springy, good spring, good ramp. It is a liner lock, as you can see, and we're locked up at, oh, about 30%. It's got a great blade shape on it, doesn't it? It is very slicey. It is reasonably small, but still comfortable, even for my big old hands. Um, this is just one of Kubi's newer sort of offerings, and it is, or at least reasonably new, and it's really well done. Deployment is by way of the deployment hole, which works every time, and the action is very, very good. This one is dead centered, just right on. You can reverse the pocket clip, now, because it's a liner lock, it's not that lefty-friendly in that regard, but you can swap the clip and carry this any way you want, as long as you want to carry it tip up. There is no tip-down option, but that's okay. It is very pokey. If you wanted to give somebody a little bit of a move-along, the 122 here is a good option. It is basically a spear point, which is done very well. It comes down to a really nice edge. This is very slicey, and it has a very pokey tip on it. Build construction is super straightforward. It's got their lovely KB pivot. It's got two body screws, right? So there is no lanyard space on this, although the way this is designed, if you wanted to put a lanyard around this rear post, you absolutely could, and the blade gets nowhere near it, so you wouldn't have to worry about cutting it. So that would work too. You could do that. God, the action on this thing is poppy. Now, these run about 44 bucks. Um, I did a Civivi review not that long ago, and the Civivi had Nitro V and slightly fancier stuff, but it was, you know, it was coming in at $80. Uh, companies like Kubi uh, still produce excellent knives in the $40 to $50 range at that next level down. Like, they're simpler, right? They're not button locks, they're not fancy, but man, do they work. <laughs> and I mean, they do produce. Some expensive stuff, too. This, of course, is the Monster Dog in 20 CV, right? You can spend more money on Kubi if you want to, but if you don't want to, and you're just looking for a pocket knife that's going to be around a while, Kubi really has got your back. I mean, this is S30V. This is about 119 bucks, right? The D2 stuff, I have never had a rust issue with a D2 knife from Kubi or Ganzo, now that I think about it. In fact, I have a knife that has been living in my bathroom on purpose for six months. It is a Ganzo. I can't remember the number, which one it is off the top of my head. But I've just left it in there, and I use it for various things, because I'm trying to see if that hot, steamy environment causes their D2 to rust. And so far, nothing. So D2, while it is not stainless, at least not truly stainless, um, if it's done right, doesn't seem to take on color depending on the manufacturer. So something to keep in mind if you're worried about that. 122 has got a nice neutral handle. Got a choil up here in the front. Got a little bit of jimping on the lock bar, but a little on the back of the blade. Now, it's this is not in a good position for someone with hands my size. Um, I hold it this way. But I imagine that women carry knives probably gets your thumb in there pretty well. Uh, the... Deployment hole is a little sharp on this edge, but not up here, right? So you can just pinch and roll this thing out really well. You can thumb snap it open, which works too. And you can, of course, flick it open. Um, but there's nothing to bite you up here, right? Everything else is chamfered down and knocked down really well. And because there's no flipper tab, rides the pocket really well. Let's do some specs and then some size comparisons. We'll do a little out of order. We're going to use that line right there. 
you get three and an eighth inches of cut, three and a sixteenth inches of cutting on three and a quarter inches of uh, their D2. The grip area from behind that swell comes all the way to the tail is three and a half. So I used up the whole knife, but because of the way it's shaped, it's fine, right? It's not, it's just not a very big knife. From tip to tail, we're looking at one, two, three, excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a quarter. Closed length. We're looking at four and an eighth. And the closed profile in the pocket, it is relatively tall. We're looking at just about an inch and a half, a little bit less. But again, because there's no flipper on this side, when it's in your pocket, there's nothing for it to bang into. Really does a good job in the pocket. Let's do some basic size comparisons. I'm going to keep using that line right there. Well, what should we compare it against? Well, here's a knife that I don't like that's really small. This is the Rat 2. Um, these are very similar in overall length, although you get a little more cutting, of course, on the 122. Uh, I don't like this knife because of how aggressive the handle is shaped. I have a hard time. It's too narrow, and I have a hard time with it, getting a comfortable grip on this knife. Uh, this one has none of those problems, and they're within 10 or 12 bucks of each other. This, of course, is relatively cheap, but still. Uh, let's see. Where's our bug out? Here it is. Here it is against the bug out. They are very similar. You actually get the same amount of blade length on the Kubi as you do on the bug out, but the handle's just a little bit shorter, right? And here it is against the full size Presidio 2, my favorite large knife comparison tool. People always ask me why I use this, because to me, this is just about the most basic looking, basic knife design you can have, and it's a nice big knife, right? I mean, that is a full handful, so I hope it works for most people. There you go. As you can see, the 122 is considerably smaller. And then finally, here it is against the Spyderco Delica, which I have brought back into our measuring and comparison tool range just because it turns out a lot of people still have these. As you can see, the KB122 is just a little bigger. Which is fine. It's not much bigger, but just a little. It is, you know, considerably thicker, of course. I mean, but it offers a really good grip. I love stuff like this. I do. I mean, don't get me wrong. Running around in the world of, you know, hundred and ninety dollar knives and expensive. Look, I get it. It's fun, but there are times when I'm just out running around particularly if I'm doing something dirty and grungy where even, you know, 130 bucks feels a little excessive. So having a knife that I can drop in the pocket that will absolutely do the job. And yet I'm not going to cry if it doesn't come home with me or if it gets damaged. It matters, man. It really does. And for many people, 40 bucks is the top of the budget range, 40, 50 bucks. And I don't hold that against them at all. And you can get such good knives in that range now. Oh, man. And this is one of them. Um, yeah, it's a great pocket knife. Let's go ahead and weigh it out. I find myself curious to see what this thing is going to come in at. Mm -hmm. 3.3 on a three and a quarter inch blade. So we are just right there at that ounce per inch that the EDC folks seem to enjoy so much. Um, this is really, really well done. It is cool looking. It is comfortable in hand. It slices very well. I cut all the things I normally cut with this. Uh, you know, seatbelt material, which by the way, I'm running out of. I got to find another source for that. Uh, a ton of paracord, cardboard, you name it. And this little thing just did everything I asked of it without blinking. And because of the way it's shaped, you can even use it if you're cutting up food. Because there's plenty, of, even though it doesn't look like there's a lot, this is all belly, right? It's not super steep, but it works. So I, you can cut up food with this. This is, this is a really nice little pocket knife. And that's where we're going to leave it. This is the Kubi 122A, particularly the KU 122A. 
on loan from Scott Big Boar Williams, for which I am very grateful. Uh, I will post a link to his channel in the description, and I will post a link to this if I can find it on Amazon or somewhere else for you. <clears throat> I hope you've enjoyed this look at it. I know I've enjoyed having it around. Uh, it is a fun, functional, cool little knife. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.